As a final project for the first sprint of Houdini in 5 minutes, we're gonna build this. This very popular, isolined, tactical shooter style map. And we're gonna use a combination of standard Houdini tools and a few mobs nodes. So let's get started by dropping down a grid, which is gonna form the basis for our terrain. Let's dive in there and let's increase the rows and columns to say 400 by 400. So we have a decent resolution grid like this. In order to make that into a terrain, we're just gonna cheaply use the mountain sub, which we'll attach to it, and then scale the height as well as the element size. So we are ending up with something like this, decently detailed terrain for our case. Next, I want to build those individual lines to form those strings along which the particles will wander. And for that, I will intersect this mountain terrain here with a bunch of other grids. So let's drop down another grid, make this maybe 20 by 20, so it's way bigger than our terrain, and only have two rows, two columns, so it's a single polygon like this and it's bigger than the mountain which we can ghost here and I'll create a bunch of copies of that grid and for that again I need to create a few points this time using a line which will have its origin at minus one along the y-axis the direction along the y-axis is perfect let's scale it up to a length of three and make it maybe 20 points. We're gonna wire both into a copy to points, the grid as well as the lines. So we are getting this, this stacked grids here. And now let's wire both into a Boolean. And the Boolean in Houdini is really fun because it's rather reliable, spitting out decent geometry and resolving most of the intersections that we feed it. So let's wire in the mountain as well as the copy to points. And on the Boolean itself, let's set its operation to seam, to detect the seams where these two geometries intersect. And after a short calculation, we are getting this. And let's unghost the mountain. These are just those individual ISO lines of our map. So that's one element of the setup of the effect that we're building. Next, let's use a similar technique to build those individual terraces. And for that, again, I'm gonna use the Boolean with a bunch of copies of the grid to intersect a version of this mountain here. One that's been actually extruded, so it has some volume, some thickness. So let's create that. Let's take that mountain here and let's create an attribute on it, which is gonna be a point attribute. It's gonna be a vector, so of size three. And the default value will be one along the y-axis. And we're gonna call this one n for normal. Let's wire this in here. And we're seeing these normals are kind of screwed now. We're gonna fix them in a second. For now, we just need them as extrusion direction for our poly extrude node, which we're gonna append to the normals that we just created. And then let's move this thing, but not along the primitive and edge normal, but along the point normal. And we're gonna use the existing point normal that we created. So we're moving this straight downwards. Let's move this down to say minus four, and also check output back so it closes this mesh here. So we now have turned this mountain into a volume. Let's append a normal SOP again, just to fix those normals that we just manually input there, like so. All right, we're gonna use that as one input of our Boolean. It goes in the first slot. And let's copy this here, these three nodes, which will form the second slot of our Boolean. However, I want a bit of a higher subdivision for my terraces. So instead of only making like 20 copies, I want to make 80 copies in this case. And I want the number of points here dictating how many copies I'm making to be driven by this first value that we're inputting here in the main line here. So let's right click on that, go to copy parameter, and then to our second line, let's just delete this and paste a relative reference. So that's basically a link to this line's parameter. And let's just multiply this times four. So when I click out of it, this turns green. And as soon as I click on the name here, I can see the value. All right, in the Boolean, we want this first input here, my terrain, to be treated as a solid. And this input here, the intersection planes, be treated as a surface. And now I want to subtract B from A, so the intersection surfaces from my volume. And when I click on the Boolean, it takes a while, but it'll spit out those individual planes here with a wrong normal. They are pointing in the wrong direction. That's fixable. Next, we're gonna drop down a poly extrude, append that to our Boolean, and the distance that we actually want to extrude those surfaces is equal to the length of this line that generates our points, which we then use to copy those grids, divided by the number of points. So let's create an expression in here instead of having to manually dial this in by going to our line, right-clicking on its length, going to copy parameter, back to our poly extrude. Let's delete this from a distance, right-click in this field, go to paste relative reference, and then again onto our line. Let's right-click on those points, copy parameter, back into our poly extrude. And in here, we want to add a division by the relative reference that we just copied. And now we're making sure that this distance between each terrace is exactly the same distance as a distance between those points on the line that we're using to cut up our original terrain. 
We could just for good measure append a normal SOP again, which of course goes here after the poly extrude, this to vertices and maybe dial in a cusp angle of 22 degrees, like so. All right, so let's drop two nulls, one here and one there, call this one out underscore lines, wire our boolean into it, and the normal goes in this null here, which we're gonna call out underscore terrace like so. And now it's about time we create those animated particles that move along those lines here, which we're gonna do using a few mops nodes in the next video. If you guys like what we're doing and want to support us, you might want to head over to our Patreon, and we'd like to thank all of our patrons, especially Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, Patrick Fillion, and Gearbox Studio Quebec. Thanks so much, guys.